This video is powered by Plamod Distributors Inc. Plamod is the official Bandai distributor for all of Canada. Plamod provides a wide and diverse catalog of official branded products, including but not limited to Bandai, God Hand, Mr. Hobby, and more. Make sure your local Canadian hobby store is being provided with the best and latest products by ordering from Plamod. Hello everyone! Today we're going to be reviewing the new Masquerade Dom. So we're going to run a little bit of an unboxing onto this guy, so bear with me. And yeah, that's a Nightingale. So looking at the actual kit itself, like if you could see actually the details on the side here, we actually have quite a bit of new accessories. I haven't ever built the actual original Master Grade, so I don't know if this is actually a true 2.0. I have seen on the net, it says like it's a 1.5. So what there is, I've seen already is that they are included all the basic weapons before. And I think that's gonna be cool because the fact is that well, think of a Zaku, you only typically have the tomahawk and the rifle. This guy, shoot, it comes with two different bazookas on top of, well, the machine gun and also, what is it, the Faust? I can't remember what exactly it's called, but the grenades. So, uh, they updated the artwork. Is that a, does that mean there's a double zooka? <laughs> yes. A double zooka. Double zookas. All right, so inside the box here, I already can tell there's the multiple runners. And it looks like they've used the new color molding. So it's gonna be nice, nice dark, lighter purple. No, dark, lighter, I can't even tell. I nice think purple. it's just purple. Yeah. Holy cow. Look at these. This guy's gonna be a big guy. I'm... Oh, okay. So. And also we got the casual case of the manual as well. Seeing it, noticing, there's gonna be quite a few little bit of illustrations like in the centerfold as always. And it looks like just everything is like the basic manual should be. So, without going too far, let's get building. Hey everyone, sorry, before I cut too far into the next part of the video, I just realized I'm just checking out the runners the hands here are almost identical to the original, <laughs> what was it, 144 scale Nightingale? <laughs> was it the 1100? Or E1100, sorry. That's the 144. That's the 144. So it's gonna be a tip squeak comparison to what this guy is. And the hands look like identical, so it's gonna be interesting. I don't know how well to get to either. Do you wanna open it? Or maybe we can have a yeah, up? Take a no, let's open the bag. Put your hand behind it. Hey. There you go. You guys see it? No. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, back to the video. Before moving too far along, let's talk about where this guy actually came from. The code name MS09 Dom, a heavy type mobile suit developed in the series of Mobile Suit Gundam, developed by the Zimmer Group Company, using the prototype Goof as the original base, and was developed because of the tactical mobility limited being on Earth. Incorporating a thermal nuclear hover jet a hybrid system in the mobile suit, this was able to gain a hovercraft like propulsion, which gave it the edge on Earth to actually move through the terrain, such as desert, forestry, and certain water swampy areas. To see more, definitely, I would say check out the original Gundam series and to see this actual madhouse go into action. Well, let's continue on. The entire build only took me roughly about 5 hours to snap together in a day and all the weapons too. Nothing was pretty too hard or anything like that, it's, well, a snap. There were a lot of parts left over in the runners as there are several pieces that have been improved since the original. Now, right now there's new hands, they're similar now but they're now called emotion hands. They have extreme posability and crazy articulation. Only downside because they're so small, there's extreme numb marks on there. So you have to take your time to actually take these to clean. And well, painting them will be a little bit of a nuisance because I fear that it might actually get sticky be in between the crafts and the bends. There are a lot of points that aren't undergated, lots of polish and seam lines still you have to fix up, especially on the lower parts of the legs and the weapons. The exterior of the kits is mostly the same. They have included a lot of touch-up areas with some iron toning red and also made the improving joints uh, on the waist itself. 
let's talk about the weapons. Like, check these out. It's a full loadout. There is a Rakdim Bazooka with a detachable magazine. It has an upgraded new handle to attach onto the new emotion hands. Pretty sweet. Yeah, I love the idea that actually has the shield sort of in the front of it there. The second one, uh, there was a giant bazooka upgrade with the same ha new handle for the motion hands as well. And it does have a different sort of idea from the original, from why I could look at the original manual of the Dom, was they actually had a little scope cover that was added to it. Just different. <laughs> it's cool. There's a 90 millimeter detachable, uh, well, machine gun-ish that could be put into the waist and also some detachable magazines onto it too. That's all in one set that could be added on. A pair of Strumfausts, similar to what you would have seen on the camper at one point, that actually could be attached onto the side of the Dom, sort of-ish. It fits in these little round holders. It wasn't exactly a perfect fit. They sort of just sit there. And finally, there's the large heat saber, not a beam saber, but a heat saber that also has a new upgraded handle to fit onto the new hands and well, make sure it won't slip out of place. And they also uh, upgraded by the looks of it, the attachment that goes into the backpack. So it's actually now a lot sturdier. It's not going to slide up and down or off easily. So they addressed some issues in the past once upon a time. There you go, that's their its total loadout of all its lovely, awesome, crazy weapons. Love the guns. Alright, let's talk about the gimmicks. They newly upgraded the hip joints and now allows it to actually properly pose and actually hold into place the iconic hover mode. You still want it if you want to well, do a hover mode, no doubt you still need an action base. But actually now you can sort of do it this nice little seating pose because the way they actually now have the articulation actually in the bottom like lower hip joints now. In the past it was just on a regular just a pivot joint. So anytime you try to bend the legs, it won't actually bend forward. You actually have to tip the entire unit almost looking forward. So you know what? That's a nice new update to itself. Okay. And they actually included the original stuff in the in the box from the old runners, but who really wanted to use it, right? Each arm has been updated with a quite a new area of flex joints that's actually located on the elbow. So now you can actually articulate and actually hold and pose a little bit better for itself from what it used to be. And they don't come in, actually come apart. So I think that was one of the previous issues from the original uh, Dom from 1999 was that the way they actually create the armors on the wrists and the arms was that they're too loose and now they sort of made it in only like a few pieces instead. Hey everyone, so it's Derek. This is gonna be my hands-on approach on the new Dom. So checking it out just by quick hands-on, we're just gonna show you, well, what's there really to it? So let's go with the newest part of it that they upgraded. I love this, is that the hands. The hands they actually incorporated, I'm gonna show you here, into, ooh, 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 ooh. they actually now incorporate right inside the handle, a new uh, piece where it actually holds and lock into place. In the previous edition, they actually had the emotion hands, but the problem was with emotion the hands, there's not a proper grip. So without a proper grip, you can't actually like, have it like hold anything without it slipping out of its hand. So if you hold it straight up or even in a slight angle, it doesn't really work. But I love the motion hands just because it gives a little bit more, well, true like feel of it actually moving instead of just the regular hand poses. So I do really like these. Sad drawback is yes, there's a lot more crazier nut marks into it. Is it? No, maybe. But you have nut marks in pretty much every knuckle onto this guy. There is only one pair of hands in there, so you have to be mindful of not wearing these out. They're still like sort of polycap in ish. So if they do come flying off over time, uh, sadly, they'll just loosen up. So be patient and try to clean these off to the best you can when you cut these out of the runner. Now, the newest addition is at the bottom of here, there's a little clip piece that actually folds inside to the palm that allows it now to actually hold the different guns and weapons and locks it into place. As you see here, 
there's a couple joint parts and they maybe had added these onto the two bazookas and also the new heat rod so you can push these through and then now you'll be able to properly hold them and be able to do those better action poses without the fearing of it um, you know, falling off. So updated in there, as I said before, uh, they updated basically the hip joint. The hip joint now actually, now actually can be able to shift. So you'll be able to get the lighting here. You'll be able to actually now articulate this joint on the hip to go forward and back slightly so when it actually stands up it's actually proper into the middle centralized around the leg where the hip is but then if you try to do the crouching and and actually hover mode it actually shifts forward now properly so it doesn't like literally fall over or it looks awkward so that's a lot better on there uh, going on to the sides, there's sides on the DOM itself now has a add-on pieces where you can put the magazine, the rifle, and also the strums, the rocket launchers onto there. I'm not a huge complete fan on to the new, well, not really new, the rocket launchers, just because the way they are actually posed, they actually, they don't click or anything. It's actually just, uh, so they just sit in there. Pretty sad. So, if you put it in there, it doesn't seem as nice as what they did previously, like on the camper. And there's no articulated piece there for you to hold into the motion hand, so I'm a little bit disappointed that, well, they just sort of sit there. It doesn't properly hold. Like, it'll still hold it, but it doesn't really <laughs> hold well. The little machine gun they included with it, it, they didn't really add too much more to it. The magazine detaches, nice. It's a little loose, it doesn't really snap into place. Single little button piece that actually is on this side of this, that actually allows you to hook it into the waist. It folds in. Without the proper handle, this is awkwardly being held. And I wasn't really happy about it because they did it for the bazooka and even the beams the heat saber but not for the machine gun so saying that it has this awkward pose when i try to put it into the hand to hold it's just like the old master grades before when they had the full articulation hands you can't really hold it properly or it doesn't look accurate because every single time i try to bend the fingers in is either the thumb is not in the proper place, it's not able to actually hold it properly, and it looks like it's trying to force itself into a, like an awkward pose. Like you'll notice there's a little bit gap underneath the thumb there. And it doesn't really work. <laughs> My little grime about this entire kit that I was putting it together was they update the shoulders, so they're not no longer a separate piece on the shoulder piece where in the past, I guess there was two pieces snapped together and to put it, hook it onto the shoulder. Now it's one solid piece, but if I pull it off, it's not a connector, it slides straight off. <laughs> there's, a, there's not a single clip or piece in here. It just slides on and off. Like, <laughs> so I, I, I'm like looking at it and say, it sort of looks good-ish, but it's not supposed to. I'm hoping if you do paint this, it actually stiffens up enough that it won't come off. The monocle eye itself there, you can actually slide off either the red or you can actually easily pop off the top. The saddest thing that happened when I actually was starting to build this kit was the clear runner piece. I don't know if you'll see this. It's actually scratched up in the inside lens. This is not me in an unintentionally like scratching it. From cutting off the runners and actually because inside the bag I was looking at it when I pulled it out it was scratching against like other runners it left their crazy scratch marks on the actual front lens so I was a little bit miffed that that actually happened sadness because usually I think they actually keep the clear lenses themselves separated in a different runner but this time it didn't so when I actually put it together sad face it was all scratched up so okay so once you pop off the head <laughs> it looks slightly awkward uh the lens sticks out 
and we all know it has sort of the plus sort of look. So it actually is just on set inside a PC joint. So you can move this any direction. Like I can move it far right, left, and then straight up, and push it a little bit further down. And then I can just top top it off. I just throw back on the headpiece, and there it goes. It looks slightly awkward. <laughs> I don't know how it looks any better with this guy. The eyes looking all the way down or to the far left because I always find he always looks best because you can angle the entire head any direction you want just from the center. The cockpit itself is located dead in the center of this bad boy. To pop it out, I need to push at the very bottom base and then you'll be able to reach and pop out the actual cockpit from here on out. I actually found it was awesome. The fact is like they can actually hide the cockpit so well when you actually like bend forward. You didn't even know there was actually a cockpit in the center of this guy if you didn't actually lift it up ever so slightly. Okay, so the last part I'm gonna really show off onto this guy is the ability to supposedly remove the side skirts on the legs itself. Yeah, okay. That was not a bad sound, it actually came off. So there's only like three pegs inside here. Holds against like the entire side. Like actually two points that actually that actually locks it all in. So it's not impossible. And once you pull it off, there's a hell of a lot of details in there. So customizing, painting, detailing, it looks amazing actually, the idea they actually did that. Like I can't say that I enjoy the fact that you can really see any of the red pieces like because they're so far in the bottom of the suit that no matter what really pose you can do, you, you barely will see it. What's my thoughts on this? The build was built from originally like early 2000s. They revisited and put everything back together. They made some improvements, but I feel like 85% of the kit is still the exact same from what it was. It is still improvement and they did leave you with pretty much everything from the original runners in the box. If you really roll into it, you could build the 1999 version, but why would you really? The new changes are a great addition. It shows that they can actually breathe new life into older kids if they really want to try. The Dom is iconic, similar to Izaku, but for me, it's better. It's like a giant hover tank. Why not add this one to your collection as well? Hey everyone, thank you for watching our video. Don't forget if you do enjoy this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and by all means leave us a comment. I will be checking those out and I, well, I'll be reading them. Thank you. See ya.